a small, unreadable, shockingly red font in Southeast Asia. Come on, beast. Yellow night's over. Time to get up. Oh, by the way, Beast of the Yellow Night is how I describe the time I got super drunk and wet the bed at my mother-in-law's house. The Beast family is here, but it's not the Yellow Night yet. (laughs) Spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. Uh, What's that second one, honey? (laughs) Wow, 1946 Southeast Asia? These people are living the dream. It's a golden age. It's a really yellow night out tonight. Gotta watch for Beasts of. Sure, sure. Shots of things! Cars! Guys, we don't know! <laughs> Cars! Cars driving down a road for unknown purposes in 1946 Southeast Asia. Beast of the Yellow Night! (laughs) Okay, now, to be fair, Bill, there are soldiers doing things, kind of mundane. Beast of the Yellow Night! (laughs) Wow. Am I clear on that point? Yeah. This is the mayor, Mr. Griffin, and Mr. Morelli of the American Embassy. They are here to spy on you. Well, don't Nobody tell him. Well, well, everybody knows. I know, but That's don't. Okay, enough now. The man and the two children must have been killed instantly. The woman was still alive when they found her. Gah, the beast of the yellow night. Now that's a guy with a yellow shirt who you can't even see very well. Gah, the guy who you can't see very well with the yellow shirt. Oh, right, Bill. <laughs> This is how they make knockoff shrouds of Turin in foreign countries. Obelisk <laughs> Judge. Hey, Gary, don't follow too close, or it'll be a yellow night for you, if you know what I'm saying. There's no fruit around here, no food crops, and nobody to help you. The mountain people have all been warned about it. But enough about that, let's cut to this. Sure. The search for the credits lasted deep into the night and involved all branches of the military. The beast! You don't! Sure, you don't! No, you don't! No, I think you don't did the shooting. You don't! How could you? (laughs) Ayun! Sure, Ayun, of course. <gasps> Ayun, no! All right with that stuff. <laughs> you though, or possibly Ayun. <laughs> Tell Ayun I loved you though. <laughs> Ah, the tree did it, I guess. That's our Ayun. (laughs) Or you don't. Kind of resembling Randall Tech Cobb has not worked out as well as that guy had hoped. Obviously not from 1946. Can't survive. Ugh. <laughs> this is pretty typical of a Westerner in Southeast Asia. Hey, those things you ignore in a brunch buffet line. Grapes? Well, I call them not meat, but sure, grapes. Grapes. Oh, starving, yet still grapes so flavorless, <laughs> mushy, and disgusting. <laughs> God, I'd rather eat the crunchy, unripe muskmelon everyone pretends to like. 
So much smoke. Evidently, he's lost in the jungle along with Lillian Hellman. Run, Langdon. Run if you can. Or not. I really have no opinion on the matter. <laughs> I'm not armed. What difference, Langdon? <laughs> Typical Langdon, thinking there's a difference. I'm dying. Langdon bleeding for pity. Langdon the traitor. Langdon the Langdon grape eater. Murderer, rapist, thief. Langdon the evil man. I mean, who doesn't love the guy, right? But still, the evil. <laughs> evil man. Please. I'm too weak to try to run up. Yeah, the Flash tries that excuse anytime someone asks him to do a charity relay. <laughs> what have you got to offer? Well, uh, strange unwarranted convulsions, eh? Huh? No, I... I, I not mean to hurt anybody. I'm scared. So far, this guy's my third favorite character in the movie. Just behind that ugly red title and smoke. I'm a human being. Eric Roberts from Pope of Greenwich Village yes, thinks are. his performance is a yeah. bit showy. Would you serve me, Langdon, without question, loyally for the rest of your life? Oh, that was the final question on my application to TGI Fridays. No need for that. I always take a manatee's word. A manatee's word? I don't know. I've met some pretty shifty manatees. <laughs> <sighs> Guys, did you order man boob? No. <laughs> no. You really are sick, you know. Ah, my speech at my kids' first communions. That fruit you just <laughs> ate is extremely toxic. As a matter of fact, you should be dead. And it's a wonder you're not. Okay, look, you're a terrible toxicologist. Starving is such a wretched business, isn't it? Wretched... Painful, dirty. The reviews of Adam Sandler's new movie are in. Dirty. When was the last time you heard some fresh meat to eat? This is getting way too personal. <laughs> Your friend isn't coming, Landon. She died of bullet wounds a while ago, leaving a trail of canned beans and dried fish behind her. A trail of canned but beans? We need to get some new friends. <laughs> In a way, though, she did come through for you. Yeah, that trail of dried fish and canned beans. Yeah. What a pal! <laughs> come now, it's good meat. Probably better than anything you ever tasted. Eat, my boy. Golden Corral's new slogan. Eat. Golden Corral's even newer slogan. Well, well, don't chomp into that donkey scrotum that I tossed. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, what's that? Four associates living in? Feast of the yellow night. <laughs> God, so much smoke in my face. Uh, Oh, relax, Carl. <laughs> Larry Wilcox is in this. What could go wrong? On oh, Eddie Garcia, you're in good hands. Oh, am I kidding? We're done for. <laughs> Guys, I can't move my head to read the titles. Plus, they're unreadable. Help. Help. Oh, sorry, Ron. The titles are not easy to read to begin with. <laughs> but that smoke, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a cakewalk. <laughs> I think there's a recording director in there, but I can't be sure. <laughs> the
Very dumb guy. Well, haven't seen this much smoke since that time I went to that string cheese incident concert. Hi, Eddie Romero here. Yes, I'm a reptile. Enjoy the picture. Thanks, Eddie. You bet. Hmm. There's got to be a less convoluted way to say earlier. <laughs> oh, Lord, thou art God. Your days are without end. Your mercy is too many to count. Frankly, I'm pretty bored by it all. Don't forget that our life is short and uncertain. Let your Holy Spirit lead us through this world in holiness and justice. All the days of our lives. She just put her lips and on a corpse and now she's feeling feisty. Faith and in perfect charity to all men. May we joyfully come Ew. to the kingdom. You're so Please old and your husband's so dead gross. Hmm. At least it's being done with dignity under the tarp they salvaged from a pontoon boat. Well, the grieving family ain't gonna mock themselves. That guy's really satisfied with how well he can get up from a bench. Great funeral. Didn't even put out a bowl of checks mix. Ah, leering at women. Best done within mere steps of a body currently being lowered into the ground. You guys check out the sweet onion on that broad? Sir, please, be respectful of the dead. Oh, right. Did you guys check out the sweet onion on Sir. that? Sir! Oh, man, look at those rabid badgers tearing into his corpse. It's like, hey! Are you quite comfortable, Langdon? Yeah, pillow's a little thin. I'm like, wait, you're mocking me. I know just how you feel, my boy. Believe me, even I don't enjoy everything I have to do. Wouldn't have thought it possible, but, but this guy's room. approaching Save Bill Maher levels of smugness. Can I have a moment's peace? Hardly. It's one thing to be melancholy, dear boy, but quite another to be inane. <laughs> yep, two totally different concepts. Well, Kevin, it's one thing to own a I goldfish, but quite another to drive to Utah. Interesting. In fact, I think I will, too. But enough of that, we now take you to an episode of Love American Style, already in progress. Mr. Earl is here, Mrs. You can stop staring at your potted plants. I'm ready. Dr. Porfirio Santos wanted in surgery B immediately. Dr. Porfirio Santos, please. This movie is stubbornly committed to not having any two scenes connect in any way. Dr. Gordis, telephone call. How's wheeling that thing going? Leave me alone, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Wheeler. I'm as surprised and shocked as you are. There was not the slightest basis for suspecting that there was anything wrong. That is why I would like your permission to have an autopsy performed on the... on your husband. He was about to say, on that dip you married. I to see my husband. Of course. We haven't moved him from his room. I want to see his face. Ooh, that's me after I tried to be a hipster and shave with a straight razor. What happened to his face? The number one question about Mickey Rourke. Mangled beyond recognition in an industrial accident. He's had a number of operations. I've been helping here and there. Now, Landon. People with mangled faces recover faster if you put weird lamps next to their bed. Oh, God, 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 where's that hand going? Please say it's not that kind of movie. Is there something on my face? Just what the hell are you trying to pull, Doctor? Ask the Fafelia to come here immediately. Our wall cracks are spreading. Phil? They turned down your insurance. 
Get these bandages off his face. But he can't be alive. You do it. Right now. Don't worry, Phil. I've ordered the hospital to stop caring for you. Phil has a perfect record in staring contests. He never used to like wearing head bandages. Would you just take the bandages off? <laughs> oh no, I turned into Michael McDonald. I came from somewhere. Hard to tell whether or not that guy's looking at something. It's just so subtle. Yeah, yeah. Could be. Whatever you do, no one act like a human being. Bella? Not an attractive man, sure, but that's a touch rude. Go touch him. Millions of Americans try this ploy on the first day of March Madness every year. Get help. Quick. I need backup. I can't do CPR wrong all by myself. Doctor. Doctor. Give me the news. I've got a bad case of loving you. Mysteriously resurrected crime against God. Honey, I'm home. But I laid out his favorite nightgown for him and everything. It's tough being the Carly Simon Barbie. Bannister nunchucks. Fancy. Ooh. Philip? Philip? I swear, ever since that husband of mine left this mortal sphere, I can't get him to do any chores. Wow, got enough ice in your booze there, Philip, you big dead drink watering pansy? <laughs> well, hey, honey, just stepped out for some fresh yellow night air. Why'd you stop shaving at the sideburns, Philip? I think I'm rediscovering the nicest part of the house. You never used to think that. You used to make a joke of all the trouble I went to having it done. Then you'd make a joke about the way I talk. Come sit by me. You'd say I sounded like Jiminy Glick when he was speaking softly. It really hurt me, Philip. It really hurt. It's not too cold for you. No. Our marriage, I mean. It's not too lifeless and cold. You've had a pretty rough time of it, haven't you? Being a wealthy, attractive blonde, it's a hard life, I isn't it? Say anything like that. I've been away a long time. You should expect to be surprised. I do. Is that a Yogi Berra quote? <laughs> I don't know you anymore. Are you sorry? No. I've never been afraid of you before. I'm mostly afraid of moths and pointy grass. You are getting chilly. Relax, dear. Let me hover menacingly over you like the good old days. <laughs> oh, patty cake. I know this one. <laughs> we. Okay, I lied. I really don't know how to patty cake. Looks like the cover of a romance novel starring Conway Twitty. Hey, remember how just hours ago we watched a doctor drop dead before our very eyes? That was kind of weird, huh? Anyway, feeling frisky? Oh, Philip, I still think about the way you used to squeeze my shoulder pimples. <gasps> there, yes, I knew you still cared. 
Erotic wet willies. Ladies love them. These men are gathering for an important meeting. Their task? To try and figure out for once and for all what Southeast Asian city and country they live in. You might have given me some idea of what you were going to do. With your wife, I mean. You were all Details! Would have showed. I see. It's a one-man operation now. Is that new to you? You thought you were pretty used to like one-man operations. <laughs> These people Zing! were your partners. Sure, you've always had control, but they trusted you. They put their trust in figures and ironclad notes. And they came out of it a lot richer. And a lot greedier, too. And frankly, there's no room for wealth or greed in this Still, company. I don't, I don't know that I want to go along with this. What do you really want, then? Peace of mind? A clear conscience? A Bloody Mary? Some breakfast, perhaps? Well, have you got a clear conscience, Earl? What do you think I ought to do about Julia? And don't say stick your tongue in her ear. I, I don't tried know what that. You mean. There aren't many women who could have stood by you all this time. You're right. You see, that's the point. I hate women who stand by me. Better. Such a turnoff. And there's not a thing that she or I can do about it. So what are you going to do? Just throw her out like your board of directors? Would you like that? Do summary firings complete with golden parachutes excite right, you? Bill. Come out with it. If you're implying that there's ever been anything between Julia and me... Earl, I'm just trying to make things easy for you. Your name is Earl, so your life's already hard enough. Easy. <laughs> Julia knows what a disaster our marriage has been, but she's... Not the kind to let go or walk away. Even when her husband becomes a cut-rate William Shatner. She's not going to just wake up one morning and realize that it's you she's wanted all along. If I threw her out, neither one of us would ever see her again. Especially if she landed Why in invisibility paint. I don't want to hurt her any more than I have to. If she can make a good life for herself with you... Why shouldn't she have a chance for it? Longest version of Take My Wife, Please, I've ever heard. Hi, I'm here now. So why don't you and I kind of help her along, Earl? Make up your mind. Philip's late for the 70s game show he hosts. Praying this is going somewhere, anywhere. Whoop! <laughs> Music ran out, I guess. <laughs> Why, here's Tom Milton. Remember him? You inhabited him in 54. 55, I think. You know I can't for the life of me remember what I did with him. We either overthrew a dictator I or got chocolate enough. malts. I just can't recall. Actually, Langdon, since I happen to be in the neighborhood, I thought I'd look you up and have a little therapy session with you. Ah, you sort know, of a fat, ghostly Fraser Crane. It's <laughs> an irresistible temptation. But it may turn out to be an awful mistake. Kind of like having this meeting that? next to Willie Nelson's van. Nothing Sorry else. about the smoke. But having a face of your own is encouraging you to think about personal identity. And you know we can't have that. Well, no, of course not. No what the hell is going on? Naturally not. But your mind wonders. Why do you think I keep bringing you back, Lantern? Apart from the pleasure you get out of it. To awaken the latent evil in the people that I come in contact with. Also, oh, Comcast's mission statement. I knew you'd be sharp enough to grasp that. It isn't as easy as it might seem to find qualified agents. Or a good you smoke guy, for that matter. So come on, man. Sometimes no smoke, then way too much. Get it together. He's left entirely to chance. There's been a great deal said about the scarcity of truly good men. 
why truly evil men are just as hard to find. Oh, he just wrote a Beyonce song. Do you realize, Langdon, that if you really put your mind to it, you could be a saint? For our side, of course. Nothing seems worth doing. Okay, Bartleby the Scrivener of the Yellow Knight. You want to die. Is that it? Yes. What fantasies people pick up. <laughs> Winning the Super Bowl. A night with Kate Upton. Dying. You, you people and your fantasies. Self as a man groping towards some sort of fulfillment. Within a measured span of time. Because surely you can see that you stopped being mortal some 20 odd years ago. He's Abe Vigoda? What am I? Well, you're in transition. You're still part man, becoming, hopefully. Oh, no. Somehow we've wound up in the lost a finale. Pure moral force, so to speak. I am a man. Just look at my sweet Damn, burns. But still a man who knows shame and sorrow and revulsion and regret. Oh, oh, an endless cabbage egg rolls at cheap buffets. What the hell was I thinking? There's your regret. idea how distasteful I find this. Your hairline? I agree. I wish there was some subtler and equally effective way of making a point with you. But butthole cramps get the job done, so remember. it's butthole cramps you get. I find you quite useful, but I don't want you to be anybody. Not anybody at all. Michael Jackson's father gave him this speech every Pain night. you feel is only a slight pressure on the kidney. If you vex me further... I can be much more imaginative. But not any rounder. I've achieved maximum roundness. As round as a man can be, basically. Meanwhile, on Bravo's Real Housewives of Unspecified Southeast Asian Country... Can I get you a drink? And hey, could you try dressing up for a change? Tired of you slouching around the house looking so shabby. Earl stopped in this afternoon. I figured he would. No one can resist our tacky, tacky he home. Me. He said you had a talk about me. A TED talk. And he said it only got like 300 yeah. views. What did you tell him? Ah, uh, that your meatloaf doesn't taste like Satan's rump? I is this a trap? You know what I told him, Julia. Just what do you take me for? And what country do we live in? What was his attitude? I don't know what you mean. Stare at that Rorschach dress for a while. Maybe you'll see some answers. Did he seem interested in the idea? Look, sweetie, I feel like we got off to the wrong start about this. Let me explain. I want to hand you off to my friend like a piece of property or a common whore. Uh, does that help? What was the point of telling him all those lies? What are you trying to do to me? And what's with this arm bracelet? About four months ago, you let an airline pilot pick you up at the Savoy Bar. Now that bothered you a lot, didn't it? Yes, he was only a Delta pilot. I thought I could at least score one from United. You didn't care whether you lived or died? You didn't care what happened to me? How was I supposed to feel? Just the way you did feel, Julia. The trouble is, you've never been able to forgive yourself for it. And I blame you for that. How long have you known? What difference does it make? Philip, suddenly I don't understand you at all. Hair's pulled so tight it's cut off the oxygen to her brain's language center. Earl is as close to being what he seems to be as anyone you've ever known. With him, you'd never have to wonder where you stood. For example, right in That's front of the camera. Wanted, isn't it? And it's not supposed to matter whether I love him or not. What do you want, Jude? Love you've had. Why don't you settle for something you can live with? Thanks, E. Harmony. Who are you? <laughs> as far as you're concerned, I am and can only be. Whoever or whatever you think I am. Okay, that was really dumb. I'll go away now. If you think I'm standing here, that's just because all you could think is that standing here is what I'm doing. I need you. I don't want to lose you. Whoever, whatever you are. 
Whatever I am is whatever the inverse of the thing you thought it... Oh, forget it. Boy, how about this night we're having, huh? Yellow enough for you? Gosh, I'll say. <laughs> Yellow is all get out. Oh, you ain't kidding. The Batmobile and the Ghostbusters car had a horrible baby. Lovely child and so affordable. Vincent Price's summer home. Sometimes one just needs to get away from the realm of the living. Thanks, Vincent. Anytime. That's a nice statue. I better go tell it that I'm not whatever thing it thinks I ought to want to be. Ooh, forgot about his severe allergy to gothic architecture and pipe organ music. Good Fred Sanford impression, though. Well, look here. Another arrogant white man who comes to wherever this is and can't handle our favorite local liquor, whatever that might be. What's the matter? Are you ill? Ah, that was one heck of a stomachache. Acid indigestion can make you feel like a violent monster from hell. Oh, the guys from Campus Sig? I can't let them see me like this! Those three are in hour five of debate over Who loves you the most, man? It's me! No, shut up! It's me, man! Come on, come on! I'm late for the thriller video! Yes, nothing inspires terror in the streets like a man who really needs to have his gallbladder removed. Hey, uh, hey, Chucky, you in there? You want to team up? Sorry, man. Even I think you're too ridiculous to work with. Oh. My God, no! They're out of slinkies! Ah, God, the agony, why? Oh, oh, hey, Tony, carrying a crate? Hey, buddy, yeah, how's it going? Oh, you know, just making a little horror movie. Oh, neat. Have fun with that. Thanks, man. He's like a flopping World Cup player who just realized the ref isn't going to call a penalty. <laughs> Goat in a truck? Sure, thanks for checking in. Really gotta find a no questions asked dry cleaner. Oh, now I'm kneeling in a dead squirrel. God, what a night. Yellow? <laughs> That's the ticket. I'll ride the rails. It's the hobo life for me. Just my bindle, my evil curse, and a can of mulligan stew. Must have a concussion. One of the symptoms is sudden onset daytime. Oh man, did I get into the Mike's Hard Lemonade again? Pfft, I think my underwear's on backwards. I wonder if I should talk to an exterminator about this family of shrews living in my bouffant. Sexy little number from the Mrs. Roper collection. Philip? Is that you? Or an undying evil spirit inhabiting your body. Philip? Let me in, please. You know I don't know how to work doorknobs. I'm very tired, Julia. I'll talk to you later, all right? Is there anything wrong? No. Oh, I kind of need to use the bathroom in there, but I'll just go in the koi pond again. Night night mangled corpse. There must have been some kind of weapon used. 
Nobody could have done that with his bare hands. I don't know, Lieutenant. Even a weapon has to be handled. I like to handle my weapon three or four times a day, if you know what I mean. What kind of a weapon would you need to rip out a man's heart with a single blow? Kaliba? You're not sure it was a single blow. I wouldn't swear to it, no. Not on something as mutilated as that. He's so gross, I uploaded pics to E-Bomb's world. Hope you don't mind. More than three times. Once on the head and twice across the body. With the force of a jackhammer. And that's not all. Order now and get a free spiral cutter. We picked up bits of tissue from his heart, lungs, digestive tract that looked as if they came out of a meat grinder. Mm, guys, I'm craving a burger now. Yeah. No. Well, how else can you explain the way he's been acting? They're in the yellow submarine. Wow. All right. He's having a hard time fitting into things. Do you really think sending him away again will help him? But Dr. Jekyll's a specialist. i that he needs psychiatric help. That amounts to the same thing. Don't you see? He needs us. He needs me. Not some stranger poking around in his mind the way they did with his body. He'll be fine now that I cut gluten out of his diet. He's all alone. And he doesn't want to beg for anything. Like my face scrub he keeps stealing. That's why I said all those things to you yesterday. I wish that were true. It is true. Maybe he is lonely in a way. But I can't reach him. He's on AT&T. I don't think you can. He's grown hard. Mean even. Ooh. He can hurt you, Julia. <laughs> and we can't risk that, can we? He's my brother. What? He is? What? <laughs> That's hard to believe, too. Julia, I'd make very sure of my own feelings if I were you. I got rid of feelings what? years ago and opted for blandness Why did it instead. Why so important to you? Only a week ago, you weren't sure you wanted to stay. What's he done to you? Or is it something that you've done to yourself? Like hairspray poisoning. So now we're both dangerous. Nobody's harmless, even to himself. Are you sure you're helping him this way? Hey, his stunt double's in the background there. No. Are you sure you're helping me? Is he sure... Wait, is he sure he's helping her to help Phil maybe not help himself? Did I rake you? Rake you? <laughs> I guess you did. I didn't hear you come in. Beware the Coloradans bearing gifts. Because it's always crappy Coors Light merch. What's the occasion? An attack of guilt, probably. I spent the entire day indulging myself. How's the angry inch, Hedwig? Drove around, shopped, ate a fantastically expensive lunch, went to a movie. Left my pants at the theater. It was madcap. Please don't let this be more high karate. The cook says you haven't had anything to eat all day. You must be starved. Not really. I had a huge victim. At I mean, dinner last night. <laughs> dinner. Dinner should be about ready. I'll go see. Julia. Thank you. I love my new manic depression Pandora charm. Oh, he's gonna plant a big wet one right on her, right, right on her cheek. <laughs> cheek. <laughs> you know, my wife keeps bugging me to build one of these traditional '70s style sexy makeout law libraries in our own house. Oh, nice sexist stereotype. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Give a man a piece of shiny jewelry, and he'll be all ready to put out. I'm sorry, my breath smells like entrails. Love me. Pretend you're Randy Newman and I'm L.A. I don't care if it's sarcastic. <sighs> okay, come on. Let's uh, move this party to the couch and get it over with. She's gasping. Someone get her back in the water. <laughs> They're like two aliens who tried to learn human lovemaking by watching the room. <laughs> oh, hi, intercourse. 
The first step to having sex is to get your pelvises as far apart as possible. Yo! Put a mouse trap under your skirt? Philip, what are you doing? I don't... Philip, please! Philip? I'm sorry I kissed Phillip. you like I was bobbing for apples. I was just nervous. Philip, let me in. Go away, Julie. Go away for your own good. Your own grandma? Philip, please let me in. Spacho? What? Philip! This shoe shot is a nod to Imelda Marcos. Filipinos, you know. Philip, please let me in! Only the labs of hell would combine the hair of Gene Simmons with the face of Don Imus. Ugh. Has he tried just searching WebMD for abdominal pain plus beef jerky skin? GNC guys were right about that protein powder. Dude. And that's a quick hello to the other neighborhood husbands who have snuck out for cigars. Ah, uh, this is more like it. You know, chicks don't understand that sometimes a monster just needs to get his mash on. Use my eCarnage app. Uh, helps creatures of the night connect with succulent local victims. Nice. Ah, it's one of those ladies of the yellow night. I'm a terrible Jehovah's Witness. Oh, he looks like he has to pay for it. Mama, sandali lang. Uh, me love you fair and fiscally commensurate length of time. How much for handy? <laughs> Yeah, whisper a few lines from Dante's Inferno in her ear, and a woman's putty in a hell beast's hands. Hey, someone just stapled up a lost cat poster! Little tags with phone numbers? I'm in! Always sad to see a small business go under. Still, now there's room in the market for other mom-and-pop prostitutes. Always leave him wanting more. <laughs> oh, stupid bifurcated tail. Wes Craven's old boy. The town must be kicking itself for not throwing a virgin into the volcano this year. You guys might need some spare hookers. Why do teen boys always woo with this car? I don't I don't get it. You know, I think it's time for Satan to bring in someone from outside the company. Mm, I agree. Well, maybe a Damien Thorne or, or a Regan McNeil. You know, a young go-getter who's going to bring something fresh to the table without losing sight of the original objective. Yeah, Prince of Darkness really owes it to the shareholders. Mm. Yeah, it's become one of those trendy loft monsters. Hmm. Nice space, affordable rent, good schools. Couple of tips from Property Brothers and Designing a Dime, and I think we've got some potential here. Adele? Oh, great. A live in landlord. Thank you. Anthony Kiedis has seen better days. Who are you? What do you want here? If you've come for the braised possum feeders, sorry, you're too late. Beat Mateo you're looking for. He won't be here till morning. Leave any feces you brought on that crate along with a name and phone number. 
And if you come to steal, you're wasting your time. Yeah, a lot of caveats for an indoor landfill. I know you're there. Now comes one of cinema's most brutal groin punches. Not a lot of money in obelisk wholesaling these days. Are they looking for you? Monster Hall? It's not a bad place to hide. Unless they saw you come in. I'm just gonna bleed out on this nest of carpenter ants, if that's okay. Uh, wake me around nine. <laughs> Daredevil's sad later years. Well, he's male. Edward James Olmos? Phil? Put an APB out on a Miss Piggy. What does it mean, Earl? Where is he? I'll tell you in a moment, dear. I've got something I've been meaning to ask Mancow. This is a child's toy, isn't it? Operator, I'd like to call police headquarters, please. I'm assuming that this is still somewhere in this area. And that a mummified tarantula is on your head? They can spare. <laughs> We've sealed off all possible exits from the district. We've started a house-to-house -house search. What about the army? Ah, Polly Shore's in it now. Come. They won't come in until we ask for them. I'm not going to have a panic if we can help it. As you all know, my tap recitals the tonight. The description of the fugitive has been issued. Except for that, he's male of medium build with a heavily scarred and mutilated face. Frankly, that's all I'm prepared to believe at this point. Ah, Filipino Ron Swanson, thank you for joining us. I thought you might want to look at this, sir. Comments left on the men's room wall about Picture your tie. A window in the house of Philip Rogers, a well-known American businessman. The man had an argument with his wife and locked himself in. Then texted with his friend Apart. Amber about how unfair it this all was. He got out sometime during the night. Notice that there are no tool marks or abrasions of any kind on the iron bars. Which means that Rogers, or whoever bent those bars, did it with his bare hands. A washed up Robin Thicke awakes wondering where it all went wrong. Ooh. Blind guy has his pal Pablo Casals over for breakfast. Yeah, I think I could still wear this shirt to IHOP. Oh, just rub a dryer sheet over the stains. That's what I do. <sighs> okay, you want to start the scene there, Beelz a chump? I hope you like eggs, Benedict. I make it with three kinds of phlegm. So, what do you think of the place? I gave Matteo ten grand to redecorate. He says it came out great. I'm making some soup. I can talk about you anything else. Ah, still beats best western. Ah, Mel Brooks totally ripped off this scene for young Frankenstein. Matteo hasn't come in yet. Mateo's a squirrel, isn't he? <laughs> I don't know him. I thought not. Why did you help me? The odor of blood was very strong on you when you came in last night. You're dating a Red Cross volunteer, aren't you? I can still smell it. I know it well. And that's why you helped me? I did not help. I nuzzled? I just left you alone. I would do as much for a stray dog. You don't belong here. Are you Tom York? No. My nephew Mateo is the caretaker here. I'm just visiting him. Speaking of belonging... How do you like my sock broth? The and they may wonder what someone like you, a foreigner, is doing in a place like this. 
Yes, I guess they would. Wait, this isn't the embassy? I see. What? That it makes little difference to you whether you are lost or saved. All you want is to make an end. No one is ever saved. You are an optimist. <laughs> yep, no one is ever if saved. Classic optimist plan. talk. There Pollyanna. There no need for life to run so long. Shirt from J. Crew's Chambre Murder Collection. Who are you? Who I am now is of no great interest to anyone. My name is Savasa Snar. I'm the Southeast Asian Severus Snape. The bandit. You have a long memory. Yes. Savasa Snar, the bandit. If only my parents had left they off the bandit, I could have had a normal career. No. They kept me in prison for 30 years. Hoping that I would die quietly. But I just kept telling my backstory wild. till they let me go. It was no longer important. Only I remembered. And I remember as though it all happened yesterday. Because some of it happened yesterday. What about the others? The ones who followed you? Many of them are dead. The others believe I died long ago. It is better that they do. I do not have much time left. And I'm wasting it on time you flapping what? your gums? To do what remains to be done. You two-faced old bastard. <laughs> Sounds like my grandparents playing up, canasta. You're still rooting around for that blood-soaked soul of yours. Blood-soaked soul. Sam Cooke's unpopular you death metal fool, album. It's gone. And you'll never find it again if you live to be a thousand. You're quite wrong. And pretty that judgmental for a murderer who woke up in my garage. Not even if we long to be rid of it. And he who gave it to you remains forever part of it. That is why you are in such agony. You're not rolling your eyes and making the jerk-off motion while I explain all of this, are you? Oh, my stomach. It was either that soup or the girl I ate. Hmm, something about that guy I don't trust. I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> Philip Rogers, a well-known businessman of this city in connection with the killing. Rogers is 35 years old, 5 feet 9 inches tall, of medium build. 5 foot 9? I'm actually 5 8. Well, my day is made. I have nothing more to say. I'm interested in locating my husband, not in having him hunted down like a criminal. Uh, don't freak out, ma'am, but there's no a tribble on your chest. Is one, Mrs. Rogers. But surely you can understand that we are obliged to take certain measures in the interest of public safety. We do want to find your husband, Mrs. Rogers. And perhaps it's in his best interest that we do. I'm not a complete fool, Inspector. Yeah, just because her husband came back with a totally different face and personality and she accepts it doesn't mean she's a fool. Langdon. Joseph Langdon. We found this headshot of him on the wall of a deli. I never saw Langdon, and we shipped the old files back to the States years ago. Surely it must be possible to send his file back here with photographs. But what for, Inspector? Joseph Langdon is dead. Not only is that a matter of record, you were one of those who witnessed his death. You checked in at Langdon's I death witnessing party on Foursquare. I saw him fall down a ravine a hundred feet high. Twenty-four years ago. The man you're holding is thirty-five. He wasn't even in his teens at the time. Just what are you trying to prove? Guy in back moonlights as a model for the J.C. Penney catalog. Mm, good pose. The man you have is Philip Rogers. He has personal records that go back to the day he was born. Nurse records indicate he was bad to the bone. For his change in appearance. His wife, his brother, his friends all know who he is. He doesn't have any friends. If Don't oversell it. If Langdon were alive today, he'd be well over 50. And he wouldn't look at all like that. It just doesn't add up. Filipino Mulder and Scully don't have quite the same sexual tension. Mm -hmm. Sorry to have wasted your time, Colonel. Not at all. The guy from Harlem rents out the office down the hall. 
Yeah, he moved to Southeast Asia so that he'd be even more from Harlem. You didn't say much in there. I'm not going to suggest that you should take a long rest if that's what you're driving at. But I will suggest you stole your outfit Maybe from I Regis should. Philbin. I never put much faith in hunches before. And I can't question the facts. Why am I so sure that that man is Joseph Langdon? I don't know, because he's the only white guy in the country? The Caged Heat series really took off once they replaced the schlubs with babes. Oh, hi. Hey, uh, could I get some cellmates in here? Maybe a harmonica guy? This is all so pointless, Landon. Let me die, then. I can't. And won't. Unless you'd like to make a deal with the Look devil. Oh, oh, wait, you already did that. I have commitments that go back to the beginning of time. To hell with that. My life is all I'll ever know of time. Right, your never-ending life or all you have is time. Do what you like with mm -hmm. me. I'm not afraid of you anymore. What incredible arrogance. Just who do you think you are? And what country do you think what we're in? You think I'm still you not sure. Get away from the man who placed his soul at my feet in trade for a bag full of rotting meat. And then he agreed you that rhymes are neat. <laughs> you said I was still becoming and had a choice. It was a mistake, but not a disastrous one. I've been making things easy for you. Could, could, could you stop tapping I've your hat you like that? It is really stop distracting. A convenient stop scapegoat it. for this recent Seriously. transports of self-indulgence. Well, no more, Langdon. Okay, look, the hat is not menacing. Next time stop you it! The transformation, it will be entirely tap. your doing. Tap. Do bear no, in mind. <gasps> you will not have another one unless you bring it on yourself. Even I'm not sure how this makes your life worse, but whatever. Now that cloud smells like ancient evil. Parmesan cheese and loafers without socks. Jeez, folks get so rowdy on free ice cream cone day. Don't panic. This happens every time I leave the office. It won't be any better tomorrow. You really want to go through with it? Yeah. Let Earl and me go ahead. You can meet us later. No. I'm staying with you. Her real husband must have been some prize for her to grow this attached to an evil spirit. Please, everyone calm down. The boys from One Direction will be out soon. We've got sticks! We're really mad! Okay, listen up! I know you're all angry, and with good reason, this guy totally did it. The wife's a real whack job, too. Can't believe Agpoon forgot the pitchforks again. Begin and done. Terrible Larry the Cable Guy. They're just mad craft services served quiz notes for lunch. Ooh. This is the inside of my brain after watching Jeff Dunham. Lou Diamond Phillips, no! Get a doctor, quick. No, I'm not hurt. I'm okay. My spleen absorbed the attack. Impossible. Your cabana wear remains a perfect mix of style and comfort. Well, that's not a knife. A larger knife, not on camera, is a knife. Hurry up, we're late for the Grey Poupon shoot. 
guests of the Yellow Knight will enjoy luxury accommodations at Embassy Suites Manila. Bodyguard Grandpa enlarges his prostate when threatened. Charges, I'll call you. <laughs> okay, if we stop and maul a hooker. Yeah, more like the beast of the light midtown traffic. Where are we going? We're not going back to the house. Why not? Oh, Philip, it wouldn't be safe. You saw those people back there. They've already convicted you. Plus, we're flea-bombing your bedroom. Well, anything's better than just sitting in that house waiting. Earl found a place in a quiet part of town. We can stay there for a while. As long as somebody doesn't feast on the corpses of his hosts. We're leaving the country, Philip. Hint, 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 hint. Was this your idea, Earl? No. You know very well I've never had any ideas. I'll go along with whatever you want. It was my idea. Earl made the arrangement. Tomorrow night we're driving out to Corban across the bay. There'll be a fishing boat waiting for us. Captain's name is Quint. Don't mention sharks. I won't let them take you, Philip. I've waited too long for you. You're my deathless monstrosity. What do you make of it? Oh, probably the smart thing to do would be to forget it altogether. That's how I dealt with two broke girls. By the way, we decided not to book the man who owns that. He won't leave. He's already made a kick-ass pillow for it in his cell and everything. Who was Joseph Langdon? I probably should have asked that when we started the investigation. The U.S. Army deserter, convicted of collaborating with the Japanese, while a prisoner of war in World War II. Exposition via Filipino Jerry Orbach. Torturing and informing on his comrades in arms. He escaped from the American stockade here and joined some native wartime contacts in the mountains. But he was too much even for them. Final straw, taking one bite of an Martyr. apple then putting it back in the refrigerator. Village, <sighs> rape, very often for no comprehensible reason. Finally, he was alone. We tracked him down and killed him. Normally, we'd have arrested him, but it was Friday afternoon. His body wasn't recovered. No. He was hit at least a half dozen times and fell off a high cliff into a river. Unfortunately, Rasputin's body they broke his fall. looking for his body for almost a week, but they found nothing. I wonder what he was like. Besides a homicidal <laughs> rapist and traitor? <laughs> Great guy! <laughs> a lot of laughs. Like if you knew nothing about him. But there was a hard, cold hatred inside him. Which no one could account for. Or bother to. Hmm. They kept military intelligence pretty casual back then. <laughs> After our meeting with the military attaché the other day, I went to see a friend at Army Intelligence. He dug this up for me. Please help me. I can find Waldo nowhere in it. <laughs> Inspector De Santos here. Yes, Mr. Rogers. We've been waiting to hear from you. My God, what an amazing freehand circle. It's Herbie the Lovebug's most disturbing adventure yet. Are they still in the house? I left them less than an hour ago. Inspector. I hope you understand my position. I'm betraying my you brother so I can stop his wife. Oh, man, that sounds bad out loud. in danger to either or both of them or ISIS. I'm rather concerned about Mrs. Rogers. So are we. She's Can fed I... up with all these sweater ironing. Does he still find my eyes dead enough? You should be asleep. You won't be much help if you don't get some rest. Who will carry all my luggage? Will you stay with me, Philip? Will you Simonize your mighty sideburns for me, Philip? You shouldn't have waited for me. There was nothing left to wait for. Yeah, Langdon's trying to pout his way to some sex. It's called the Nelson technique. <laughs> I did think that. Then he came back and changed everything. <laughs>
Satan turned her Those zero into a dead. hero. You can always get out. The way you came. <laughs> His deal with the devil must include unlimited access to Ambien. You came back to me. And you kept coming back. To use you. <laughs> That's just another way of saying that you need me. Like the time you screamed, I don't need you. That's all I want, Philip. To be the white icon Tina, that's all I want. That you need me as much as I need you. I think we can agree the real monster here is codependency. Mm -hmm. Oh, the beast really likes it when you kiss between his toes. It's the beast, not me. Nelson technique. <laughs> oh, honey. Yeah, see if you can get a whole sideburn in your mouth. Great. <laughs> Ew. It's like they're mouth fighting for a piece of raw flank steak. Oh yeah, Beast of the Yellow Knight in the streets, Pawn of the Dark Lord in the sheets. So, Langdon, are you quite comfortable? Not now, chubby Satan. <laughs> it's monster movie softcore, but with a fake Ray Fawn Williams score to keep it tasteful. Yeah, tell discount rack Nancy Sinatra you love her, Philip. <laughs> ah, my master keeps setting off my shock collar. Philip. Philip. Yeah, this is one of the side effects of Cialis that's rarely discussed. Careful, men. He may be dead. You're under arrest for impersonating Nightcrawler. No! <laughs> he is the wickedest bitch slap I've ever seen. No! Scene lifted from every episode of Cops. So we're cool? Okay, thanks. Got a motor. Hold your fire! Hold it close. Really let your fire know how you feel about it. Take two men outside and follow him. If they fail, call that pet detective, detective I keep hearing Don't about. Don't try to take him. But find out where he goes and report to me. Yes, sir. Ah, I used to love it when the police would come and tuck me in. Good times. Julia? You're sitting on my shin. Uh -oh. His life's a disaster, but his hair is very nice. I used to have a hot comb. <laughs> you did not tell me that you had a visitor around here some nights ago. A jolly fellow by the name of Claus. It was nobody of any importance. It was the American killer. Jerry Lee Lewis? The police let him go today for lack of evidence. But you know he was here that night, don't you? It was of no importance. We had our no. fun, but he meant nothing to me. Ruben and his cousin saw him leaving with dried blood all over his clothes. It was a good look for him. He's a rich man. He can afford dried blood. How much did he give you to keep quiet? He gave me nothing. Nothing but love. He was tired and needed a place to sleep. We snuggled briefly. You old liar. Ah, uh, your, your face is sliding off. I took you in when FYI. no one would have you. I let you stay. Gave you whatever food and money I could spare. Bought you some proactive? <sighs> Me, with a sick wife and four children to worry about. He gave me nothing. Oh, okay, he gave me some coupons for Jimmy John's. 
and a mini football, but that's it. It wouldn't help you to be stubborn, old man. I don't know. It's gotten me this far. Who is it? Boy, that Jimmy John's is fast. Mm -hmm. Who's out there? Speak up! He won't hurt you. Much. Get away from there! He needs me. Please, Mateo, let him in. Hey, hey, I'll do all the slapping and shoving around here. There you go. There. No! Leave him alone! Just give me a sec. There, okay, I'll leave him alone. He means no harm. He beats me out of the goodness of his heart. He's just afraid. Like you. He won't give you away. I promise you. You? Guy who looks almost as dumb as Kelsey Grammer's beast? Mrs. Rogers, it's imperative that we know as much about your husband as you can tell us. It's imperative that we know what happened last night. Mrs. Rogers isn't here right now. Did he say anything that might help us locate him? I'm sorry, Inspector. I can't permit you to continue. Oh, come on, please! You let us know as soon as her condition improves? Yes, but I cannot tell you when that will be. Because I'm a pharmacist! I'll come by and see her again before I leave. I'd get some rest if I were you, Mr. Rogers. I'm okay. Thanks for care and neighbor. It's really sweet and nice. So, uh, how's the food here? Is it okay? Or... Pudding looks pretty good. You gonna eat it? Julia? May I eat your pudding? Oh, so that is that a yes on the pudding or because you know it's just sitting there? So, so yes. yes. Yeah, eat pudding. I wish you wouldn't snooze against my cave-aged cheeses. Is he dead? No. He's breathing easily, but he's badly hurt. He's dying, but he's quite relaxed. Try slapping him back to consciousness. You better get a doctor. Yes, I was just waiting for you. To change. Because your clothes smell like monkey ass. You know. What will you do? I don't know. I'm tired of running, but it's all I can do. They can't kill me. I could walk down the road while they play that Hulk piano song. I don't know. You want some nachos? I'm gonna make nachos. What is your name? Joseph Langdon. I chose it because Lee Majors was already taken. My name is Joseph Langdon. You have a name and a face. And a tush. Woof. You speak, you think, and there is an awful pain inside you. Whatever else you might be, you are still a man. I believe in you too, guy who tried to kill me. There is a clinic nearby. I'll bring a doctor here. Then I'll make nachos. Stay out of sight when I come back with him. What for? I will help you find a place to hide for a while until you know what you must do. I'll need first and last months plus security. No good. Somebody tried to help me once. I destroyed her. You cannot harm me. You see, I want nothing from you. I could use a Vicodin. Looks like a rogue production of Fiddler on the Roof. Don't worry. They won't see us. We are too big to notice. Yeah, they sure blend in with the other Filipinos. I have a good feeling. I think I'll have a better day today than I have had in a long time. Even better than the day I went blind or the day I was forced to move into my filthy hovel.
Okay, let's jump at General Lee Hello. style. Yeehaw! Okay, if things get ugly, take out the old lady first. She's the leader. Now remember, men, these are highly skilled local artisans. Haggle with extreme caution, and whatever you do, don't let them sell you an inferior basket. We are Filipino. Balut is delicious. There's a hill to the right of us. Tall grass to the left. The road turns left on the side of the hill. Oh, and there's about two dozen armed guards. You should probably know that. Walking to the grass now. You can't come with me. You will never find your way out of here. I will be your eyes. Do as I tell you, now. Okay, I, I was totally wrong. Oh! Yep, major mistake on my part. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I forgot to say stop or I'll shoot. So, uh, stop or I'll shoot. This is still going better than the time you let Stevie Wonder paint his kitchen. What's your back? Oh, 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 seize firing, not keep firing. Got it, my bad. Randall! Randall? There's no way out of there! <sighs> Come out and give yourselves up! Ha <laughs> ha, no way you can find us in here! <laughs> Come out or be burned out! No, no, helmet guys to the left, beret guys to the right! Start over! It's no good. No. Only a few meters away. The galley. They can't reach us. Landon! This is your last chance! I'm telling you, that's not Lando. Lando's a black guy with a cape. They're not going to give themselves up. If we wait any longer, we lose them. I don't know. I just hate to harm a soulless monster. It's always... Okay, but it's on your head. Fire! Shouldn't we stand further apart? Just keep blasting, wuss! Shot. Mm, something smells delicious. Oh, they lost a killer, but they managed to smoke out 11 paintball teams. Almost done peeing. Hang on, I'm not done yet. <laughs> this is how my dad used to keep mosquitoes out of our yard. No, we're going back. I dropped my lucky sack of joy a dollar. Okay, being your eyes was a mistake. What say you let me be your left ball? No. Right? No! No balls. Don't shoot! We're coming out! Something every gay person in Alabama has had to say. Don't shoot! But if you have to shoot, aim for the old guy. Turns out he's kind of a load. Sausages? No! My favorite flock of geese! No! I'll never forget how ineffective you were. I am still perfect. Thanks for letting me get my mask on first. Thoughtful, guys. <laughs> Again with the slapping. It's like he's made throwing a tantrum into a martial art. Oh, now biting! Good! He's become the beast of the fourth grade playground fight. <sighs> sure you just ate that guy's face, but you're all right with me. Hey. How you doing there, old fella? Guess the fire can't make things worse for your face, huh? 
So the lesson is shoot him, he'll be fine, and he'll come at you like an enraged toddler. <laughs> he still has good in him. Please. Okay, maybe not. Take me to him. Can my Rat Pack Weekend Ensemble help in any way? No. Good lord, guys, a spirit gum disaster. Langdon. Langdon. Please take care of my hovel. Keep it good and wretched. Pray for me, Langdon. What, me? No. <laughs> No, I'm kind of a unitary. Well, more of an agnostic, really. Pray. Do it! Pray for me. God, now everybody's watching. Um, <clears throat> bless us, O oh Lord, and these, I guess, which... Oh, man, I suck. Come on, pray for him, you chicken. Bark, bark, bark. Stupid not praying, hell beast. Go to hell! Oh, that's okay. Just ignore my dying wish. <sighs> there, see? How hard is that? My baby can do it. Okay, now he's just weeping and chewing on the old man's belt. I gotta put a stop to this. The old man's death cleansed my soul. From now on, I'll do nothing but good. I'll be kind in the world. Ah, oh, son of a bitch! Well, got a tea time with Bing. Yep, and then he turns back into Substitute Bill Bixby. We, we know the drill. The moral of the story, if you make a deal with the devil, always negotiate for a decent-looking mask. Oh, well, here's the surprise twist. He transforms into George Clooney. So what happened to Chubby Satan? Did he just ditch the guy? I guess so. I'm betting he headed off to the States to talk Don King into committing his first murder. Oh, wait. There he is. Cowardly, sniveling fools. Uh -huh. I accept forgiveness of no one. No one. Didn't ask for it. I alone am answerable for what I am. I will not serve. I will never work for tips. I also am. And will not be overcome. <laughs> and as we're overcome with the stench of chubby Satan gas, we say so long from RiftTracks.com.